This is the real world. No guarantees. Nine out of ten species that have ever walked on this earth are gone. They're not here now. They're extinct. The planning I wanted to do would have guaranteed that we at least wouldn't go extinct. But there is a certain risk of that probably now. But I don't think we're going to go that, down that road. I have to tell you, I wouldn't be bothering to do this. Given uh, that, there is a path. Our teachers have provided us with powerful tools and lessons, and I include always when I say that, not just the visitors, but us, our own living and dead teachers. There's plenty of them around here. I've talked to five of them this weekend. We're finding our way. Uh, can we understand, and if we do, can we act, each one of us within ourselves before chaos overtakes our ability to become conscious and find our way because as society is stressed more and more by these changes it's going to get harder and harder to remember who we are so let's start now we live inside of time we cannot see the future our dead live outside of time they cannot see the whole future but they can see more this is why we need them now to join us. We need a larger vision of reality, and they are there with it. For this to happen, we have to develop new tools of mind, primarily revolving around an objective and accurate vision of the soul and the world of the soul. You know, when Annie first passed, uh, I was struggling because we had planned to build this bridge. That was what she thought the whole visitor experience was really about. And how did I, now that we, she was on the other side, what did I do? And there was a lot of, she, I had a lot of help from her, but probably the single most helpful thing is one I want to share with you now, which is I was at a conference, William Henry conference in, um, uh, uh, in, in, Memf uh, in, in Nashville, and a lady came up to me rather embarrassed and said, Mr. Strieber, just the strangest thing just happened. I, I heard your wife's voice tell me, no, she started out saying, do you have a special chair or rocking chair or something? I said, well, no, not really. And she said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm so embarrassed. This has never happened to me before, but I just feel like I ought to tell you, I heard your wife tell me to tell Whitley that she can see him when he sits in the chair. It had immediate meaning for me because it was the, there is a chair in which I sit and meditate. And I realized it's meditation. That's probably why the visitors showed up in my life in the first place, in such a way as they did. Uh, and I feel pretty certain that when we do this, we kind of give off a glow. We become more visible and therefore more able to interact with these other levels of reality. I think in truth that material existence is only an incident in the life of the soul, a brief moment in which energy and insight are gathered, part of a great journey across the bridge that we're discussing. Because it's not just a simple bridge, it's a bridge not only between us, us and those in spirit, but also between ourselves and these presences we call aliens, a bridge between many worlds. And you know, understand me, we, we gotta be careful. Uh, Linda's got something when she, she talks. This isn't all sweetness and light. It's the natural world, which if you go to the savannah in Africa, you will discover it's full of prey species, predator species, and it would be a, a dangerous place to live. And since we started out there, we probably all have a deep memory of that. We can now do things. We're going so far away from the soul. We can edit DNA to the point that we're going to be able to create designer children, right down to the color of their eyes and the level of their intelligence. The CRISPR process is gonna make that possible. And probably we won't be doing it right in the West, but in China they're gonna be doing it right now. Bi Chinese billionaires will want super children and they will get them, and they will get them soon. Then what do we do when there are people in the world who are 
50 times more intelligent than Einstein. What do we do then? We're at the edge of creating artificial intelligence. In March, Google's AlphaGo, based on its deep mind system, beat Go Grandmaster Lee Sedol in four out of five games. Now, Go is the most complicated game that exists. Go is so complicated that you have to measure the number of moves possible in Go against the number of atoms in the universe. That's complicated. 